what it is and what it ain't. I'm going to let y'all know what I think. But first, you got to hit that post notification bell button. So, yo, it's been a loop every time I drop a new video. This your boy, Gold Mouth Short. Let me get straight down to business. Make sure y'all donate to my cash app. Check out my affiliate links and check out some of my previous videos. Today, we finna talk about LeBron Dennis from The Dogs. Now, a lot of y'all don't remember The Dogs, but they had that song in the early 90s with Disco Rick. Call your mama on crap rock. Well, the Brian uh, Dennis, he got locked up after the group broke up because he got a uh, double murder out there in Miami on the University of Hurricanes campus. He killed a football player and his ex-girlfriend, baby mama. But, yeah, he caught natural life. He often... Uh, the state prison in Florida, the Rock, call it uh Florida State Penitentiary. He was looking at his execution. You know what I mean? He been in that thing since like '96. He was signed to Joey Boy Records. Uh, Disco Rick. He went on and uh went to Loot Records and put out Wiggle Wiggle and stuff like that. But Joey Boy had them signed for three albums. And the group broke up when one of them killed somebody, killed two people on Miami University campus with a shotgun, jealous rage. But I'm going to play y'all a clip. Just chill. On the morning of April 13, 96, Earl Little arrived at his University of Miami on-campus apartment to pick up his keys to his black Ford Explorer that he had loaned to his roommate, Marlon Barnes. Little found that his vehicle had a puncture mark in the right rear tire, causing the vehicle to tilt toward the right side. Little opened his apartment door to find Barnes slumped against the front door, badly beaten and barely conscious. Little called the police, who entered the apartment and found the body of Timonika Lumpkins, who had severe trauma to the back of the head, but was still alive. Barnes died at the scene, while Lumpkins, after being airlifted to the hospital, later died. Both suffered trauma wounds and lacerations that were later determined to be the result of multiple blows from a shotgun. Barnes and Little both played football for the University of Miami, and during a meeting of the football team after the murders, some of the football players indicated that Lumpkins had an ex-boyfriend named Labyrinth Dennis. In an interview with police, Dennis admitted to being romantically involved with Lumpkins and fathering a child with her. Dennis told police that he and Lumpkins had had an argument the week prior to the murders when she came home late after an evening out with Barnes. At the time of the argument, Dennis and Lumpkins were living together with Dennis' cousin and her boyfriend. After the argument, Lumpkins moved out. In the early morning hours on the day of the murders, Dennis was seen at Club Salvation, which was the same club that Lumpkins, Barnes and a mutual friend had also visited that morning. Dennis, however, denied seeing Lumpkins and Barnes that morning. While canvassing the area for information about the murders, police approached a gas station attendant, who worked at a gas station that was located a few blocks from Club Salvation. The attendant told police that a man matching Dennis' description and wearing a black, hooded sweatshirt that covered his face was parked in a car at the gas station. The attendant also told police that the vehicle was in a position to allow the observation of a black Ford Explorer, with a flat tire, being loaded onto a flatbed tow truck across the street. Police learned that an acquaintance of Dennis, Joseph Stewart, might have information about the case, so he was questioned. Stewart told police that Dennis borrowed a shotgun and duffel bag from him. On the morning of April 13th, Dennis hid the duffel bag, which contained a black, hooded sweatshirt, black boots, the significantly damaged shotgun, and a knife, in some bushes at Stewart's mother's house. Upon finding the items, Stewart became nervous and threw the clothes in a grocery store dumpster and discarded the shotgun and knife into a sewer drain. Police later recovered the shotgun and knife, as well as the duffel bag, but were unable to recover the discarded clothing. Additional forensic investigation determined that fragments of the shotgun found in the apartment matched Stewart's damaged shotgun. The state further linked Dennis to the murders and established Dennis' motive by introducing evidence that Dennis had stopped Lumpkins on several occasions and had once threatened to kill her with a gun. Trial Summary The 8th of May 96 indicted as follows. Count I first degree murder. Count two first degree murder. Count three armed burglary with assault or battery. Count IV criminal mischief. October 28, 98 jury returned guilty verdicts on all counts of the indictment. 
The 2nd of December 98 jury recommended death sentences by two votes of 11 to 1. February 26, 99 sentenced as follows. Count I first degree murder, death. Count two first degree murder, death. Count three armed burglary with assault or battery, life imprisonment. Count IV criminal mischief one year. Case information. Dennis filed a direct appeal with the Florida Supreme Court on March 29, 99, citing 13 trial court errors, failure to adequately instruct the jury about accomplices, improper bolstering of witness testimony by the state, erroneous admission of evidence, denying a motion to suppress evidence, allowing the state to impeach its own witness, admission of collateral evidence, admission of autopsy photos, inadequate sentencing order, failure to prove aggravating circumstances cold, calculated, premeditated murder and heinous, atrocious, or cruel murder failure to consider mitigating circumstances, extreme mental or emotional disturbance, and disproportionate sentence due to the murder being a crime of passion. On January 31st, 02, the FSC affirmed the convictions and sentences. Dennis filed a petition for writ of certiorari with the U.S. Supreme Court on September 25th, 02 that was denied on the 2nd of December, 02. Dennis filed a 3.850 motion with the Circuit Court on November 25th, 03 that was denied on the 5th of October, 04. Dennis filed a 3.850 motion appeal with the Florida Supreme Court on the 9th of November, 04 that is pending. Florida Capital Cases. State. FL. US. Sheesh, that boy got some time, man. As you can see, that boy got a per life sentence. You know, he was down there on the rock, man, up there in Florida in the penitentiary. He in that murder Wikipedia. He been dying up about 25, 30 years. They was trying to uh, give him the ejection of electric chair, but. I think he appealed his way off there, so he on the main compound, but he still got life, but they was trying to find a way to still electrocute this man, a lethal ejection, this man, but he was a, a local superstar. He was on that song, Your Mama's Own Crap Rock. He got uh, gold plaques and stuff from the base era. You know, he had a good run, you know what I mean, but... It was sad how this case ended up happening to him because he got into a jealous rage and the police did a little footwork and found out it was him because basically he used his girlfriend car and he went to the club where he knew his uh, ex-girlfriend was sleeping with the football player partying and he flat their tires and then he went to their apartment and came in there with a shotgun and beat him to death. You know, hit the dude like 20 some times in the head and beat her with the shotgun. And then he stashed the shotgun at his homeboy house because his homeboy let him use it. And his homeboy told the police that he let him use it. And, you know, he already had came to the police and was trying to get cleared, acting like he ain't know nothing about it. And he was trying to uh, make sure he wasn't a suspect. So the police made him a suspect and put everything on him. So I don't know, did he really do it? And he just showed up to the police station and then they just made him the prime suspect and made the crime fit on him and the real killer out there? Or is he really the killer and his guilty conscience was catching up with him? So he went and talked to the police and they eventually put the charge on him. But none of the evidence didn't lead to him. Peace, I'm out.